Try it out. I only had one can of cinnamon roll, so I think me and you aren't gonna get any, Dan. Oh, man. No. You gonna give me your cinnamon roll, Juju? I know. You can have a bite, though. <laughs> Got it, don't you? Wait, we're already checking. I have to check in uh, on an app, the Rome app. But it's still the US. Yeah, but you still have to check in. And then... You been in St. Thomas, too! Yeah. I think Martin was chaotic. Hi, Oliver. We had a welcoming committee arriving in Vieques, which is always a great thing. I decided to uh, install this new manifold that Rain Man sent me for ours that was drilled wrong. I gotta take this manifold off and whenever you take that off you have to replace all these packings and they sent me just the right amount of packings, no spares, so everything's gotta work out right. I told them to send me uh, some extra o-rings. I told them to send me six at least of the o-rings for the caps for the unloader valves and then there's another o-ring for the actual unloader valves. They sent two of each. That's kind of frustrating. I mean something as cheap as an o-ring and they won't send me you know after I've, I've ran into the issues I've had. I'd like to have some spares that were exact fits. Not real happy with how Rain Man's handled this situation. I mean, it was their fault that this manifold was drilled wrong and it's cutting into the O-rings and I, I would think they would send the whole crankcase and um, high pressure pump assembly in one where we could just replace that and not have to take all this apart and do everything so meticulous and make sure everything's right. Like say one of these bolts breaks off into the crankcase and have to try to drill it out and get it out without damaging it. I mean it's just it's, it's bad business for them to send this part to replace because there's a bunch of things that could go wrong. This is the old manifold. Here's the new manifold. So I've got to replace all the the packings in here. There's more packings here, 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 and they're pressed up in there, so. Okay, got those in. This one's got a little nick in it. Not good, but hopefully it's not enough to matter. Supposed to torque these bolts to 8.9 foot pounds. Make sure we got everything just right.
So you already got the new manifold on there. Yeah, everything's back on already. I'm about to put it back down in here, hook everything back up and try it out. Hopefully it works and don't leak. So would you buy another Rain Man water maker? I probably would. I mean, the, everything is very heavy duty and made very well for the most part. I think they need to work on some uh, customer service with just parts. I mean, or just send spare parts that you may need when you're out. Especially when they send you a whole new part to install on their messed up water maker. I got the new manifold installed. Everything piped in. About to try it out. Check for leaks. <laughs> See any leaks. Trying to get all the air out the system right now, letting it work out. It it's making water, but it ain't doing too good. Why do you say that? What's wrong? Uh, it's fluctuating. It's only putting out like 23. High pressure hose is vibrating. You okay? Yeah, I'm uh, just frustrated. I'm expecting it to work like a brand new one, you know, when I started it up. It's just. It's not putting out but like 20 to 23 gallons per hour. Vibrating the high pressure hose pretty bad still. Free filter pressure's jumping just like it was. One thing I may try. Would you still buy a Rayman water maker? Um, not sure. How's it looking now? It's looking better now. Maybe uh, I ran it down and back up, down and back up a few times. So maybe it's just working my air out. It's not vibrating as much now. It sounds a lot better. It's a lot smoother now. The pre-filter pressure is steady. It's putting out more. It's putting like about 28. A lot better. I'm a, a lot more happy now. Just got the water maker finished up, rebuilding it. I uh, got these 2,000 gallon per hour bilge pumps. I'm gonna upgrade to these. I'm about to start installing those. So what's going on right now? So this bilge pump said it came with one inch and one inch and one eight fittings, which it does straight, but the 90 that it comes with, which is what I need, only comes in one and one eight. So the hose that's down here is 25 millimeters, which is a little less than an inch. So it would work if this was an inch, but it's not. It's one and one eight, so it's too big. So I don't have a transition piece to change a one and one eight to a one. I always need more parts. Yeah, I always do. That's okay. We got I did, time. I did find this. Uh, I may be able to clamp around for time being. Just the hoses. I mean, this bar is way too small. Right. But I may be able to make it work for now until I can get what I need. We took a break from projects to hang out with some of our boat friends. Not long after, we left Vieques and made the short trek to Salinas on mainland Puerto Rico. We're actually underway right now, <laughs> even though you can't tell in our little towel hut. We're going to Salinas, Puerto Rico. Hopefully we can rent a car and go get some Chick-fil-A or some Firehouse. Crisp Krispy Kreme. I think we're going to leave from here, Puerto Rico, and go to Panama, which is a really long way. I think it's like seven days. I still want to start provisioning now for the South Pacific. Yeah, and I got to get some parts to install the blocks for the downwind sail and a few other parts for the bilge pump. So we need Find everything we need. Boat parts, heavy provisions, Krispy Kreme, Chick-fil-A, and Firehouse. That's what we're doing in Puerto Rico.
That was the most sketch rental car. He says, South Carolina, I just need your ID. Uh, and you look at my ID, he's like, okay. Paying cash? I'm good to go. I said, you take a car, you need a car? He said, no, cash only pay me now or when you come back. It don't matter to me. I said, okay, we'll pay you when we come back because we don't have much cash. No contract, no overlooking the car for scratches or dents, nothing. We're going to Walmart, Krispy Kreme, Home Depot, All American, West Marine. Um, uh, Walmart, Home Depot, Home Depot, we need to provision too, don't we? Yeah. Here, in the park. Right. Follow me. I don't know where the bathroom is. Yeah, can I go too, Mama? And when y'all get done with uh, checking them out of the box, let's break down the box, okay? Dan. Putting groceries up. Trying to find places for everything. We're taking all the food out of the packaging. All the cardboard boxes, we're breaking them down. It makes it a little bit easier to shove stuff down <clears throat> in all the small spaces. Yeah, and people say cardboard attracts bugs or bugs live in the cardboard or something. We haven't experienced that in the Caribbean yet. I don't know if we just do a good job of getting rid of the cardboard we or... We live on a I'm not. You did spray the boat before we moved on. I don't know if that still deterred bugs or... I'm not real sure. We got a bunch of carbs and a bunch of cereal on this run, didn't we, Juju? And milk. Yeah, we got so much stuff. Like, our carbs were filled. They were, but it's just mostly junk food, wasn't it? Yeah. Every day we have the rental car, we eat at all our favorite places and keep provisioning, trying to get as much food stocked away as possible for the Pacific Crossing. labeling what these are just on the top. I'm not going as far as to take these labels off. People say there's bugs underneath them. We haven't experienced that. I'm sure we'll learn our lesson the hard way and we'll be invested one day. But for right now, I'm just writing what these are on top of the cans. And then I'm gonna get this cabinet more organized and all of our canned items will be there. How do you feel? Uh, I feel like we need a lot more stuff. Like, we can't just eat Rotel, and I have a ton of Rotel. I'm planning on getting more chicken, getting more canned chicken, getting more, um, like, pasta packets. I need stuff like cream cheese. Cheese takes up space in the fridge, though. Cream cheese? Well, yeah, I mean, but at least we have a refrigerator. Yeah, we gotta eat. <laughs> While in Puerto Rico, we explore the city of Old San Juan. Are y'all looking out on the street? Yeah, we are. You gotta have a coat, you know? Tearing down these ceiling panels so I can get the uh, blocks mounted for the downwind sail. I got two blocks I got to mount over here, and I got one block I got to mount on the starboard cabin and a winch over there. I got the first ceiling panel down. We already have one block for the Genoa. Uh, it's right here. Uh, you can see it was installed from the factory, so I don't really have a back and play that it's got some washers underneath. There's not really a whole lot of force on that. We're going to drill 
this out with a hole saw so we can have access underneath. Gonna add a block right there. That'll turn the sheet uh, for the downwind cell up to the ham. Back here, I think we'll be drilling out this. There's another place for a block up top. I got the right angle drill. Got This is a quarter inch stainless steel backing plate. I already drilled the holes. I got some 316 stainless bolts, nuts, uh, washers, lock washers, some red Loctite, got a four inch hole saw. But even with the right angle drill, it was still too big to fit in between here and here. I had to drill a pilot hole and then I was able just to start the hole saw at an angle, kind of like that. Then I was able to turn it. Yeah, now we got access and mount like that. So we can bolt the block top, should be good. Bought from two dollar bin. I'm just kidding. How much was that thing? Two hundred and eighty five dollars. That's that's cheap. That's from M8 selling. Like from other places, it was like three twenty five, three fifty. I, mean, I saw it in uh, the French Islands for like four hundred or something. Like that. Just bolted it on. Make sure everything's gonna work. Looks like it's gonna work good. I drilled the four inch hole. And I was putting the backing plate up in there to, to make sure it was going to have a flat surface. And it slipped out of my hand and fell down behind here. I tried to reach my hands down in there. My hands were too big to get down in there. I got my oldest son to try to fit his little hand down in there. He couldn't grab it. So now, I'm trying to remove this piece right here to maybe drill an access hole into here. Trail part of a hole enough to get my hand in. I was able to get the back and plate out. I'm trying to get this freezer cleaned out. It's a hot mess. I have a bunch of stuff that's not even, like we don't even use. Like why do we have this, why do we have this 30 pound bag of French fries? Putting away groceries, trying to find a place for everything. We've got a hot mess in this boat. You got peanuts behind your head. It's awful. I hate when it gets like this. All my groceries are about to fall out. I, we go in Walmart. I swear, I think we went in there at 12:30, and we were walking out at 4:15. I don't know. It's just you, I didn't know if it was dark outside when we were walking out. We spent hours. I don't even know what we went. Nick, I saw Mickey today, and she got the pet in. Oh, look at that. Who took that picture? I guess Papa. Yeah. Oh, Mickey. Yeah. Mickey settling in. <laughs> I've got more cans. I'm finally getting our like can area back stock. I'm just writing the names of everything. Like I said before, I don't take the labels off anything. I'm sure I'll learn the hard way. Everyone does that. They're like, oh, bugs. And they're not bugs. I don't know. I don't know if they're in the from the store. If they're bugs, or if they get bugs on their boat and they just. Um, breed under the low I don't know. I haven't noticed anything. I'll keep you updated if we're in festival bugs. We're just some festival flies right now. Yeah, we have fly infestation. <laughs> like this full. has just been in 24 hours. Full. They're always in mangroves. You go anywhere where there's a lot of mangroves. What's that on the napkin, bro? I'm down here in the port forward locker mounting these pad eyes. This area right here, definitely very thin. This is the issue that Colin with Parlay Revival had where he was flying his spinnaker and off of his pad eyes and it lifted the whole deck of the boat off of the hull. This is the hull that comes up right here and it kind of wraps around. Then the deck just screws with, here's a screw. Here's a screw over here, another one right here, and it's glued. You can see how thin this is, so his part like ripped up right here. So I'm trying to reinforce this, making some brackets. So I ended up buying some anchors, some galvanized anchors. I'm cutting them up and I'm gonna use the pieces off of them to actually brace. I got the braces in. It'll work. I mean, I think it'll definitely help distribute the load out to the hull instead of all being on the deck. We needed to install the sheave for the spinnaker halyard block at the top of the mast 
for our downwind sail. We're just going up a little ways and gonna come back down and see how it goes, okay? This was our first experience ever climbing the mast. You okay? Yeah, I'm all right. I wonder if y'all should practice letting down. Okay, we can do that. What did y'all think? It's up to you. That's way up there where I gotta go. I just I'll go, the river. I don't, I don't go. He it's has to do work, honey. Well, I could show him what to do down here if he wants. I mean, if he wants to do it, but he can install a block up there. It's simple. I mean, I got one down here. I can show him exactly what he's got to do. I'm thinking I should just go on up there. You okay? Yeah, I'm just trying to get comfortable. Hang on. Go get junk organized. You okay? Or you want Jack to go up? I don't know. I mean, honey, you can come down. <laughs> Jack, do you want to? Would you rather come up here? I mean, it doesn't matter. It's up to you. I'd like to, but we we can let Jack go up. Okay, well then let's get you down. Yeah, this I don't know if it's the Bozeman's chair that just ain't comfortable, but it's that like looks oh. Miserable. You okay? Just hold on, wait till they go by. You okay? We can get you. Tell, tell me when you want slack on the blue rope. Jack did awesome going up the mast. He was able to put the sheave in the spinnaker halyard block and run our halyard where it needed to be for our downwind sail. It's been a crazy week here. All week we've been trying to get this downwind sail installed. Daniel's been drilling holes, doing blocks. We've sent Jack up the mast three times. I lost my phone, not yesterday, but the day before. But I have all my photos, but all my videos, they're, they're gone. I've got a canker sore in my mouth. It hurts so dang bad. It's like the devil, just right in the cheek of my mouth. Now it's still chaotic. We've got everything torn apart this morning. I've got Jack's bed all torn apart because I'm going to put some of our provisions that we've been gathering the past uh, week under his bed. I got to take all these ceiling panels down. I got to install a block over here and then I got to install a winch over here. It's been it's been crazy. I mean we've just been wide open. We're trying to put the spare inverter under the bed. I mean, we've just got everything torn apart. We've cleaned out all the rooms, put all their stuff here. We didn't want fiberglass getting all over Jess's stuff. We've got mattresses up front. We've got paper towels everywhere. Um, we've got spare water in case something goes south in the South Pacific, something goes sideways. I don't know. We've just got a bunch of stuff we've got to store away. We've got extra diesel cans, even though Daniel was wanting more diesel cans than that. You're not in the mood for jokes. Not right now. I mean, it's just I'm ready to get to a point where we're finished with this. Sail, I'm always sail. Not flying the boat, you know. I mean, if I've lost all the excitement for this day on the sail, not that I have much to begin with. Well, hopefully, it don't rip the second we put it up. Thank you for watching.